everyone. How are you doing? I'm going to read you something. I'm going to blab a little bit, and then I'm going to introduce one of the most beautiful girls in Western Pennsylvania to you. She's going to be our speaker today, my daughter Sheila. Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14. It says, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of God, or I'm sorry, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait, I say to the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. And you guys know, man, I've been through some stuff recently. <laughs> I'm totally on the mend. I expect to make a full recovery. They scrape me clean, I'm benign, I'm good to go. I just got to do some healing. I got to get off these fuzzy feeling drugs I'm on and get back into life. But you guys have been praying for me and you guys have been helping us out and we, we are so appreciative. And I, I just want to thank you first off the bat. Thank you all for praying. Thank you keep praying. And uh, um, I saw this thing recently online. Uh, these critters, they were gangly looking things. They were on the bottom of a mountainside somewhere out west. I don't, they were just the ugliest looking things I ever saw. They were eagles. They, they were losing their feathers. Half of them didn't have a beak. Their eyes were all glassed over. They, their claw, they were just a mess. And they were wandering around like zombies in the bottom of this mountain, pecking away at this, and they're getting skinny and crazy looking. You know, and uh, what those were were middle-aged eagles. For some reason, an eagle goes through this molting thing and just goes through this process and stuff falls off and then it slowly grows back and they get stronger and the feathers come back, the beak comes back bigger and stronger, their eyesight gets sharp and they can see for miles and they can fly forever and glide above, but they got to go through this process first. And guys, that's where I'm at, man. <laughs> I'm in that multi-period. <laughs> my beak's done falling off. Every time I pass the mirror, I go, oh my gosh. I got a staple thing in my head. It looks like railroad tracks. Question mark railroad tracks right here. But uh, thank God, um, you know, he caught me. He used my daughter to save my life. I, I, I was going nuts. I didn't know what was going on. I, mean, I was seizing up. I was having problems. And I didn't know what to do at all. And uh, the Lord moved on my daughter, Sheila. And she said, Daddy, you got to get checked out. And it was perfect timing. By the time I got in there and got checked out and had my surgery, I am, like I said, I just praise God so much. I'm going to make a full recovery. Amen. And God takes you through. <laughs> God takes you through stuff. And you just got like, yes, Lord, I'm going to hang on to your hand. I don't understand this. I don't like it. I don't even like it, but he is going to get me through this. Like 30 plus years ago, I held this little infant in my arms, and I was scared to death, man, because I'd never been a daddy before, and I'm holding this crying baby, and all of a sudden, she calms down, and she makes eye contact with me. Her name is Sheila, and we, in that hospital room, we made eye contact, and her and I had this bond, unbelievable. And uh, she heard from God this past couple weeks, and it saved my life. And the Lord has been moving on her heart this week with a message for us to uh, encourage us, to uplift us, and to help us through some rough stuff. We all go through rough stuff, don't we? Why is this happening? Why did it? Yeah, but you hang on to God, and you're going to get to the other side, and you'll make a full recovery too. You'll be like that eagle. You'll be gangly one day, and the next day you'll be soaring. So and I hope I'm soaring right beside you. But I would like to introduce to you Sheila Collins, my daughter. Talk loud. Just for me. <laughs> I appreciate it. Surprise! I thought you, you thought you were going to hear a message about a star. 
<laughs> okay, so first of all, please give me grace because I am not a speaker. Um, <laughs> And I am part Milnes, so I'm not a good reader either. <laughs> so I was just talking to Eric um, and uh, my Uncle Mike and Aunt Susie how us Milneses, when we see a paragraph, the words just start to dance. And so we're like, <laughs> we can't focus on anything. But we didn't get you that. Got, you got to get close to that. Thing. Sorry. Um, so yeah, we didn't get that smart gene. I do have, we do have smart cousins. But we didn't. <laughs> Some of us, we just didn't. Have that. So if you see someone looking at a paragraph and their head's nodding, you're, they're watching the words do a conga line off this. <laughs> so, with that said, I would like you to turn to Luke chapter 10, verse 38. I'm no speaker. But first, let me pray. God, I just thank you so much. Oh, God. I'm so grateful, God. And I just thank you for all that you've done for all of us in this room. God, I just pray, Lord, that people would even recognize me, that they would see your power just flowing through me, God. And I pray that this would be your message, not just for me, but for everybody listening to this. God, I just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Luke chapter 10, verse 38. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come help me. But the Lord said, My dear Martha, you are so worried and upset over all these details. There is one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. So I know Martha is the one who um, was preparing food, uh, figuring out the details, and making sure everything was in order. But I really want to zero in on Mary, because uh, this really, uh, through this whole thing, this is just the message God has been showing me, that Mary has this childlike faith. And I feel like with me, like when you're young in God, you have this confidence. You, any problem, situation, come, anything that comes up, um, you know your God is taking care of it. You just have this confidence in you. And um, that's how I felt. I felt like that was me when I was young in the Lord. And growing up, like, our parents instilled in us, like, God always takes care of us. I mean, our dryer would go out, or, you know, we wouldn't have a car or something, but God always, always, always came through. I have a really funny story at the time. Um, my grandfather, my dad's dad, gave us a car. We didn't have a car, so he gave us a car. And um, it was a Dodge Diplomat, and the window was broken, and so anytime it rained, the back seat would flood, and so there would just be water, like, all in the back. And so my brother, when he's sitting in the back, he always had to sit Indian style. Because there was water on the floor. And so when I would sit in the front, Mom's like, okay, I'm stopping at a stop sign. I'd have to lift my feet up in this thing of water would come out the front. So any car I would get in, I would all, just automatically have my feet up. And I'm like, okay, there's no water in this car. I don't need it. <laughs> Away. So I was like thinking about my dad. I'm like, okay, you know, it might have just been that. And then I had a dream that he had brain cancer. And I'm just like, you know, my friend, his dad, just got diagnosed with brain cancer. So I'm like, okay. But my, my signals were up because of my dad. Like I was just like, 
there's something wrong. And so um, I wasn't around my dad all the time. So whenever I did see him, I would be like, Dad, how you doing? And, you know, every, every time I would see him, his uh, responses would be like, I'm okay. I, I, have, I have a headache. And I'm like, you still have that headache. But, like, people who are with him all the time, they don't think to ask, you know. It's just the norm. So... Um, anytime I would ask him, how's your headache? Ah, it's okay, you know, it comes and goes, but it was just constant. And so my, my, my radar was just already up. And um, it wasn't until um, he came to my house and we were talking one night, and I was like trying to explain him something, and he just was not understanding what I was saying. <laughs> he just like was not making sense. And so finally on Thanksgiving, when I came into the room, I'm like, hey, Dad, how you doing? Because I've been better. And I'm just like, when I had to hold back tears that whole day, I had to excuse myself to the bathroom and just cry. I was just so upset. Like, I'm like, there is something. There was just like this pool in my heart. So finally, when everybody left, I, I went downstairs, and I'm like, Dad, you are freaking me out. I'm like, you have to get checked. I was like, it is not normal to have headaches for three months. Um, and then he finally just kind of opened up to us exactly what he was going through. And um, first of all, I truly believe we didn't have to go through a lot of the things because my dad was at this altar constantly praying and seeking God. And he wanted God to be in charge. He didn't know what, he knew something was wrong, but he didn't understand and he didn't know what to go to, so he came to this altar, and he prayed constantly. But God was putting it on my heart, like, this needs to be taken care of. Like, do not ignore pain. <laughs> Don't ignore pain. So, um, the next, he said, okay, and I was like, I thought I was ready for a fight. I was ready, you know, for him to come at me or whatever. So, he said, okay, and the next morning, he woke up, and he left. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, he really is listening to me. <laughs> but, um, so, he went to kind of like a Med Express, and they couldn't really, they didn't have the equipment to, you know, help him. So he went to, my mom took him to the Beaver ER. And um, uh, DJ and I had went, took the kids home. We were staying there for Thanksgiving. So DJ and I, we had drove home, driven home, and um, my mom calls me. And she said that, it's multiple, the ER doctor told her it's multiple tumors. It's most likely cancer, and they want to take him to AGH to see um, if it originated in the brain or if it was somewhere else. Um, and the ER doctor told my mom that she just saw a patient uh, go through the same thing and they live three wonderful years. And my mom's like, that is not enough time. <laughs> three years is not enough. Um, so when my mom called me, I completely crumbled. Like, I was a puddle on the floor. My poor husband, he, he didn't know what, I didn't know what I was doing. He just was trying to come for me in any way he could. But I was beside myself. It was a nightmare. And it was like all those dreams and thoughts. And it's just like, God, no, 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 I can't. I don't accept this. No, this can't be happening. And finally, my mom had driven to my house in Pittsburgh, and we went to AGH to see him. And by that time, Eric and my dad were playing balloon toss or whatever. <laughs> but I, I was the first time seeing him since the diagnosis, and I just, I just fell into the bed, and I'm just, and he's like, "We are gonna be all right." He had, um, he had this peace and this security in God because he was at this altar. He was at the foot of Jesus. And I thank you for that because it was an amazing example he set for us. And, um, but he just had this confidence that we're going to be okay. We are all going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. And so the next day, the doctor, um, he got some scans done, and the doctor said that it may be a benign tumor, um, but um, you might need some chemo after because, you know, we're not sure if it is cancer. It might be benign. Um, we don't know if we'll get it all out. So we're like, okay, it went from being cancer all over the brain to one tumor that may be benign. So we were like, okay, but still it was just the 
waves of anxiety just, ah. So my dad went through surgery. Um, it went well, and they got everything out, and it was benign. And I'm just so thankful for the power of prayer. I'm so thankful for every one of you. And uh, we had calls, uh, people praying over him. We had messages, emails. Like He was completely covered in prayer. And I cannot thank everybody enough. Like The power of community, Like that really touched me and how important it is to have a community, to have a church, to have people have your back in prayer. That, and he honestly is a new man now, <laughs> better than ever, better than he ever was before. But afterwards, I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> it was literally like a week, and it's over. I'm like, it went from headaches to it's cancer to a tumor, possible chemo to benign tumor to a full recovery in a couple of days. <laughs> I was just like, what just happened? My emotions were all over the place, um, and I felt so foolish for not trusting in God and... Um, I completely lost it. I just, I broke down and, but I was just so like thankful that we didn't have to go through chemo. Um, and I just was so grateful. My God, my words are not enough. My word, I feel like my thanksgiving to you, my words that I'm saying to you are just not enough. I'm like, what can I do for you? And so God brought me to uh, John chapter 11. And it's um, Mary, the same Mary and Martha um, in Luke. It is John uh, chapter 11, and I'm going to start in 29. But Mary and Martha had just lost their brother. Their brother Lazarus died. And um, when Jesus came to, um, to their town, Martha said, Mary, Jesus is here. And so it, the Bible says that Mary immediately went to him. She hastily went, and she fell at his feet. And my study Bible says she fell at his feet. She fell at his feet, not in worship, but in desperate grief. And that comforted me so much because, you know, you see the Mary at Jesus' feet just taking everything he had in, just just agreeing, you know, and then you see Mary in grief and in sorrow, and that just gave, like, God was just like, it's okay, and that just comforted me so much, and you know what Jesus did? He, he got on her level, and he cried. It says, Jesus wept. Even though Jesus knew that Lazarus was going to be okay, and Lazarus was, was going to raise him from the dead, he wept with her. That is our God's character. That is our Jesus. And God showed me in deep despair that he's with us. And like I said, Jesus knew that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. And he knew that my dad was going to be okay. But he still, I believe he was crying with us. He was with us. His hand was on this whole thing. And on the very next page, Mary was Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. And in the very next chapter, Mary is anointing Jesus' feet. She's at his feet again in gratitude. She is anointing his feet with oil. She had the, the cost of this oil she was anointing him with was a, a cost of a yearly wage. And um, in Luke's version, it says that she was at his feet weeping. Her tears fell on his feet. She wiped them off with her hair, put perfume on his feet, because she was so, so grateful. And I felt like God was telling me that it's okay. You can have, whether you have childlike faith, or you're in deep turmoil, or you're full of gratitude, I'm with you. I'm with you. And he just wants us to come to him and to be at his feet. And he appreciates a heart that goes after him. It doesn't matter how you feel. He will cry with us. He will rejoice with us. He, the Bible says he sings over us. 
I think so many times we um, were taught, you know, not to speak negative, which is true because, you know, power, um, there's life and death in the power of the tongue. But I truly believe Jesus wants us to be 100% real and raw. Like, I think the most powerful prayer you can pray is the one in desperation and just from your heart, God, I am sad. I am kind of mad at you. But God, I trust you. Just and just go to his feet and be completely honest with him. I think he appreciates that. And he does not condemn us for having these feelings. He gave us these feelings. And um, I think it's very cool that Mary was mad, but she still got her miracle. And I just really want to encourage you guys um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. God is with you. And <sighs> he so desperately, just as much as we need his presence, he so desperately wants our presence. Just like a little child, I can't imagine my, my son or my daughter <coughs> coming to me and like refusing their love. Or God. Oh, it's, there's nothing like a child, like just coming to, even if they've done something wrong, if you go, if you come to your mom or your dad, if there's just something about it. But guys, I just want to um, thank you, and um, I'm so grateful um, for your prayers, for your support, and uh, my family and I will be honored. If you, any one of you needs prayer, or your family member, my family and I would be honored to stand with you guys up here afterwards to pray with you. But um, I want to hand it off to my dad, but thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right, dearly Father, we just thank you so much for um, this message. Um, I just pray, God, that you just, you know, help us to receive this. I pray, God, that we don't just forget this when we walk out the door. You know, we all go through rough times. But as Sheila was saying that, you know, you appreciate the heart of Mary. You appreciate the fact that, you know, she was there, you know, in her, in, in awe, in grief, and in worship. She was there at your feet at every point of the way. And God, you appreciate that heart. And that was a beautiful interpretation of the scripture. And I just pray, God, that somehow that gets in our heart. And that we don't, we don't just reject that. That, we, that gets planted deep within. That we take what Mary did and her example and my sister's story. And that we, we learn from that. And we don't, that we don't forget how good you are in every season. Even when we're mad at you that we just trust you. There's a beauty to that, and you honor that heart. You appreciate that heart. And we thank you, and we praise you. And Lord, as we take up this offering, I pray, God, that you just bless our finances, Lord, that we can continue doing things like this, that we can continue preaching your word, and that we can be a blessing to this community. As we bless each other, I pray, God, that we can go out and bless others. That we can bring people into this church so they can be blessed. So that they can go out and be a blessing. Lord, that you will do something here in this church with this story, with this testimony. And in a few weeks, whenever my dad shares his full testimony, I pray, God, that you just be here. That you bring people here. So that we can do a great work. So we can show this world that there is a God who loves them. And that you are here with us in this Christmas season. You are here with us, Emmanuel. You came and you were born as a human. You are God and you are human. And you did it. You did everything that we could not. And Lord, we love you. And we want to introduce our world to you. We want to do whatever we can for you. Because God, we love you and we appreciate you. You are a God of miracles. You are a God of healing. You are a God of forgiveness and love and grace and truth. And we just thank you for being our rock and our salvation. You are a defender. We will not be defeated. So God, I just pray for the rest of our weeks that we just have a good week. 
that we just remember this, that we do not forget. Keep this in our heart. Put it within. Put this in the treasury of our hearts, God, that this will come from us, Lord. And we just thank you and we praise you again. And as the ushers come up and we take this offering, just bless the offering as well again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You heard from my family today. What do you think? <laughs> I just want to share just a couple more things while they're taking the offering. You, you guys can come. You usher types. I would appreciate it. And while you're doing that, guys, God is going to do something here in L4. We're just a little bitty community. But he didn't just like take a, a, an old guy and, and take a tumor out of his head. He's doing some transformation. And I want to ask you, each and every one of you, to get on it. To get in front of it. To pray first before you do anything. To pray for us, your family. Pray for this church. Pray for this community. And let's start transforming our world for Jesus because he's coming back soon. He's shaking things up, but he's going to wake us up first. Do you hear me? Get on it. Get up in front of it and stay on it. There's just a few of us. But uh, he's going he's gonna to make a sweet spot here that we can invite people to to get healing. There's a lot of wrecked people out there, man. There's a lot of wrecked families. There's a lot of terrible situations going on. We can stand in spite of that prayerfully and show these people, hey, Jesus is alive. We got stories to tell uh, about how he works through the tragedy. And we want to help you. I know we're just a little community, but God has placed me here. And God gave me a new job, by the way. I have a new job. Every Sunday morning, my job is to go take a bucket to the Garden of Eden and bring that water back to Elport in the 21st century and pour that water out and we're going to learn God's heart. He lost us back there in that garden. He lost us. We rebelled. We thumbed our nose in Him and we walked away. And ever since, He's been after us to win us back, to restore us. And He's saying, I love you. Come back. You gotta repent. You gotta do some things. Yeah, you're gonna go through some stuff, but I'm here with you. My message is gonna be from that, from now on. In our little community, I believe, guys, if we all get on this, we can change some stuff. We can grow some stuff. Are you excited about that? So, like, um, I'd like to invite Sheila back up here and Eric. Anybody who wants prayer. For any reason, you come up and we will put our hands on you and pray for you. Otherwise, you are dismissed. God